stepped out for a second, but I'll just give you a little preamble. Uh, after a lot of discussion back and forth over the weekend, <laughs> it wasn't the weekend. The last Whenever few days have been about the amendment and receiving emails from a number of opponents of the bill regarding clarity. Ben and I had a long conversation. If it was not clear how to make it clear, I thought it was clear the way it was done, but uh, Ben has excellent work. And you, you sent me an email that uh, Commissioner Sherling had said there was some. So we're trying to make sure that there's not confusion. So um, this would. Uh, Strike out section A, which was the codifying of Zulu, certain lieu thereof. <coughs> these two amendments. So I'm going to ask that to go over, and then the, there's a third amendment, which is something that we already have uh, on the calendar. So well, okay. I'll let ben yeah, I'm just going to join uh, with video so I can I can share my. I'll, I'll just share it right now. Are you got it? Okay. Yeah, I got it. Is it this that you just passed up? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, ben Novogrosky for the Office of Legislative Council. Uh, to your point, Senator White. Um, Subsection, so this is uh, which will be fashioned as a floor amendment to the report of the committee on S254. It contains three instances of, mem of amendment, um, two that are more significant. The third is really just more housekeeping than anything else. Um, but as uh, Senator Sears alluded to, um, there is discussion about how to make this clear. Um, and really to, to give it the, the full force and effect that the committee had attended when it voted it out. Um, so with, with that in mind, uh, subsection A of the report that was voted out is now replaced to read as, it is the intent of the General Assembly to codify the common law principle for a plaintiff seeking damages for an alleged violation of Article 11 of the Vermont Constitution as established by the Vermont Supreme Court's decision in Zulu v. State 2019 BT1 and apply it uniformly as a burden that a plaintiff must prove to recover damages in an action brought against any law, Vermont law enforcement agency alleging a violation of Article 11. Uh, the, so this is a slight change in the sense that it adds some language about it being common law principle, so judge-made law, um, and just sort of some reformatting to really make clear that this principle was established in, in Zulo, but the intent is to make sure it applies uniformly to any law enforcement agency. Um, and I think the clarification was necessary after consultation with the senator, um, also with colleagues in Ledge Council, and, and based on some other uh, statutory construction that already exists for consistency and really to. Um, provide the intent of what the committee was trying to do, which is this the standard existed, but there was the open question over whether or not it extended beyond uh, state police. And since that was the standard outlined in the Zulu case, it's just saying that this standard that was established there now applies uniformly to any Vermont law enforcement agency. Um, the second instance of amendment would add a new subsection B, which actually enumerates the standard itself. It's a, almost a verbatim recitation from the Zulu case. And this was necessary really to give it true statutory effect and the full force and effect of law. And it goes beyond just intent. Um, and it's sort of a belt and suspenders standpoint to make sure that this truly will be what's applied um, in cases involving law enforcement agencies for violations of Article 11. So it now reads, a plaintiff seeking damages against any Vermont law enforcement agency directly under Article 11 of the Vermont Constitution 
based on a law enforcement officer's alleged violation of that constitutional provision must show that one, the law enforcement officer committed a violation of Article 11 of the Vermont Constitution. Two, there is no meaningful alternative in the context of the particular case. And three, the law enforcement officer knew or should have known that the officer violated clearly established law or the officer acted in bad faith. That is taken almost verbatim from section 55 of the rule of decision, um, just with some changes for context and to effectuate the committee's intent uh, to apply to any law enforcement agency. Uh, third um, is some clarification in section two on um, the, the report uh, that would be commissioned to ensure that it is confined to a legal analysis and shall not make any policy recommendations. Uh, the remaining um, changes are just uh, to ensure uh, lettering is consistent uh, with the changes and that also that there's a new title of the bill uh, to read an act relating to recovering damages for Article 11 violations by law enforcement and a report on qualified immunity. Yes. Question? Yeah, before you do, before I get to work, we print up report on that. What I've just said, yeah, maybe if you could bring it up, have it brought up. So it's an explanation of what we just talked about. Is it on the party maybe? I hope so. Well, I have um, a, a report ready. Um, but oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that, that should do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, do I have you had questions, Alex? I just want to know, um, could you talk a little bit about number two at the top of the page? No meaningful alternative in the context of this particular case. Could you just elaborate on that? Sure. Um, and, and again, that is taken directly from the case itself. Um, but this can mean a really a, a multitude of things. Um, so you know, there's the concept that we had talked about you know, for Vermont compared to the United States, they're their own sovereigns. Um, so an Article 4 violation under the Vermont Constitution is um, there's Article 4 and the equivalent, it's the search and seizure provision um, of Article 11 in Vermont. Um, it's to show that Vermont courts have the ability to remedy Article 11 violations because Article 11 is more expansive than Article 4 or than, than the Fourth Amendment. And so bringing a case in federal court for Fourth Amendment violation may not always provide a meaningful remedy to one that's violative of Article 11. Uh, there could also be other remedies if there's a criminal case ongoing, where if a motion to suppress evidence is granted in that case, it may provide the plaintiff in a civil action the relief that they're looking for because it would toss out the evidence and it may sink the criminal case, so to speak. Um, and so it's really a contextual analysis analysis in a particular case to see if there are other remedies possible um, that don't necessitate damages. Um, so, it, like I said, it could be uh, uh, a motion to suppress. It could be even injunctive relief to, to say that you know, a law enforcement agency can't pull uh, cars over for having obscured registration stickers because maybe that would prevent the type of behavior that occurred in that case. Um, so it would be an analysis to say that those other remedies don't exist or aren't available or don't provide meaningful relief. And so damages is really the, the way to go. Okay. So um, since Senator Bruce is not here, we need to change it to Sears and if Wade is okay. Uh, yeah, don't put me on. I don't, I don't. Okay, just, yeah. just me then. But, no, I'll, I'll be on, on the amendment. I still, I, I mean, still, I think about the whole bill, but. Well, Senator White, if there's any questions about the additional language that I can answer. Um, well, it, it, better. Yeah, I think this is a good amendment. Yeah. Agree. Yeah. Well, maybe you guys want to be on the amendment too. Don't want to go that far. <laughs> okay. I, I will say <laughs> that the majority of the committee supports the amendment, that not necessarily the bill. That yeah, that's a fair that would be the that. Yeah. 
you're moving in the right direction. I, what I'm afraid of is how this is going to look when it comes back from the other bottom. Oh, yeah. it's it's conversation like that already. Well, yeah. um, there's always a conference committee. And, uh, I haven't even gotten that far yet. Yeah, I've got it out of the, I don't even know if the votes are there. You mean on our floor? On our floor? On our floor. We can. They've been taking counts, and I think they have 17. That's close. Um, so the center should Especially if Philip is there? Yeah. Is there your phone? No. I'm wondering, yesterday he called me at 9 a.m. I was on my way up and he said, aren't we meeting? And he well, may, not have, may not have realized we're meeting at 10 today. I mm -hmm. thought we were just doing George Waples and figured yeah. he could skip that conversation. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, yeah, I'm right. So just for clarification, Senator Bain and Senator Nicka, are do you want to be a part of the amendment or no? I don't want my name on it. I will vote for the amendment okay. to get it out. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to be part of this. Just Senator Sears and and again, if you've got the report already, that's fine. Yeah, the report is really the, the full report, it's not specific. To this this amendment well, itself. I need, I need what you just said. Okay. Uh, I've written it down in my notes, but I also need a clean copy for uh, John Blumer. Right. Well, I will go right back. I will change the um, uh, who's moving for the amendment, and I will do a quick write up um, and have it delivered to you. Great. Okay. Email it to me, and I'll give it to you. Okay. Great. Thanks. Great. Do the report triple space, please. Sure. You know, Becky Wasserman sent the, the report that I, the, the, the picture that I did yesterday. No, no. And the print was about an eight point font. Yeah. I could not read it. Oh, I do 16 point font, but oh. I don't triple space. So I I it. <laughs> <laughs> it was so tiny, I couldn't read it. You know, for the life of me, when Randy talked to me about the civil with Judge Zoday, I could not remember. That. We did get the verbatim. And the reason I couldn't remember it was so quick. He said, I'm not, he was not an active participant at the hearing. At the very end, he jumped on the camera and said, I can just tell you that if a policy determination, a legislature determined where they're going to go with a non unanimous for an I sent out S 178, the original duration to a number of judges who do civil work. No judges reviewed that and said that they agree that we should have nine unanimous votes. The judges who received that, active judges right now, their view was we should stay with unanimous votes. We've heard the policy arguments back and forth. I'm not going to repeat them here. I know that some of the judges for Ramos, the case that has been referenced today, as well as other studies. I won't get into that. You've heard a lot about that when you're going to make your policy decision. As far as the judges today, I not hear any judges who received or refused that, who are doing civil work, indicate they believe that we should go to non unanimous verdicts. That being said, if the legislature decides to go in that direction, I would go with a higher numbers of the super majority. I would recommend that. Are you going to read that on the board today? Well, I, Randy asked. Yeah. Said, no, I, yeah. let, me, let me tell you why that came up initially. We had a comment. We always in our caucus go around in a circle saying, what do you got in the committee and what's your vote on it? So when this particular bill came up, they asked me why I voted against it. And I said, uh, for two reasons. One is, I think the report, being 20 years old, could use some updating. The other is that Judge Zone told us that all the judges had, had reported back to him and said, it's fine, just leave it to be unanimous. And uh, so he had that in his head oh. since our caucus, which oh. is why he got up and asked you on the floor if there was a survey of the judges done. Uh, but I think that will go a long way. In the yeah. Process. Yeah. Well, I mean, he basically said none of them said to, to, that I don't know what. Well, some of them didn't even I'm not going to judge what they actually so said, but some of them did respond. Some of them. Okay. Those Which that one? did said they were fine with the system the way it is. Yeah, right. Let me know when I should go offline. Oh. Oh.